you know, you can always give me a place to black media. All right, um. Must done 
must be done as well as the Busy Way. The Kaaba is the number 25, the ruby star, the star of Nu, the invocation of the star of the, of the word Al. Al, which means God, also means the sun. The Kaaba is a, is a, is a number of the Egyptian Keba, 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 which means the mother also. The Kaaba is her in, intended the power of the zone of the great old ones. Now what it means is this. It means that the great old ones also came to a certain point in space, which the ones are the ones who seeded this planet. And the Kaaba is a representation of what those great old ones are. In a few minutes I'll tell you what the Kaaba actually is. So these are just some references on the Kaaba. Now, it says the Kaaba, the Kaaba, which derives from the Egyptian word Kaab, which in verse of the word of the word libation, i.e. the holy Babylon, the vehicle of Babylon is the Isis. Now when I get into this mission with the woman, some of these things you think of Babylon is negative, is actually talking about the great mother. And when you hear that word Babylon in esoteric terms, it's talking about melody. When you hear the word beast in esoteric terms, it's talking about melody. That's the white man's Babylon and his beast. What he is giving to his people is the terms what he called devil and spook God is the actual terms that you are embodied with and brings you to God with. So in actuality, this is another symbol to say that the Kaaba is nothing. Now as you know, they went to, the white man went to Mecca in the early 1900s and stole a piece of the Kaaba, came back and examined it in his, in his particular lab and found out that the actual the Kaaba is made up of pure black carbon, and you know carbon is the, is the essence of what melody is. Melody is a byproduct of the original carbon, and what the black stuff which makes it carbon is, uh, is melody. The number 32, I think, or 33, um, ginger, or bitu. Uh, look in the Kabbalistic dictionary and find out what 33, I think it's the number 33 or 32, you got the book? Uh, what I think is 32 is the number of Osiris. And Osiris is also called the god of the perfect black. And, and also, when you look at the actual metal, they tell you it's carbon, which the, which the makeup, makeup of the universe is carbon. Now, this is what happened. At a certain time in Kemet, this particular god, Ptah, who is Ra, who is also Osa, came to visit them in a spaceship, so based on some actual ancient papyrus. Now they understood that they did not worship the spaceship, but he left the spaceship behind in Kemet as a memorial of what he came down to visit him in a certain time in Kemet. Now, I guess that God came to visit him, the same God just like Jesus came back. When he came back to visit them in the form of Patah and Osa. Because when you look in Budget's books, you'll find out Patah and Osa is one of the same. And Patah also represents one of the first gods and also represents the pygmy of the Twa, which is the archetypal symbol of the black man, black woman. Maybe in his book from Fetish to God in the ancient Kemet, one of his names is called Patah Osa, as well as Patah Atan. And Atan is also a word for Medu Ra. Atan was talking about Melchizedek. So Melchizedek Awas, Awas, Melchizedek, Atan, or Osiris, came to visit the Egyptians in the spaceship. I'll give you the documentation where this is coming from. He came to visit them in the spaceship. They, after he left, he left the spaceship behind him, but the gods don't need a spaceship to travel. Well, why do we use spaceships? The reason why we use spaceships is the simple fact that some of the people is coming from other realms that's in the physical form. They understand that the Earth is so damn diseased with all kinds of bad air and bad messed up stuff and so it might be detrimental to their health. We have built up an immunity to it. So therefore, they come in a spaceship not because they need a spaceship to travel in, because you don't need a spaceship to travel in. You can just think and be there. But they come in a spaceship to protect them from this nasty shit that's going on. Especially the ones that don't come in the spirit and come in a physical form. So you probably, if you, if you travel in a physical form, you come in a spaceship. Well, Jesus came in a, this particular Osiris came in a spaceship as a memorial to give to the ancient Egyptians. As you know, also one of the books that you need to get is the Serious Mystery. Where in this book they give you a, a monk by Robert Temple. And in this book they also sort of uh, talk about the black guy of Osiris, 
which is Hayward, and they also talk about heaven going to be in a small star, which is dark magic. But in there, they show you a picture of a, of a monument built in Kemet of a spaceship. Right here. In Kemet of an actual spaceship. And these are actual spaceships throughout some area. In the whole nine yards. In the serious mystery. So you need to get this book. One of the key books in the Bible that you need to get on serious. Now, uh, he visited them and he, he left the spaceship behind. So as a result, they used to go and make a pilgrimage like the Muslims make a pilgrimage to Mecca. They used to make a pilgrimage to the same city of Om, which is known as Heliopolis, to the spaceship as a memorial of what Osiris was and left behind. And they made a pyramid. Now we understand that Mecca and all of that land at one time was the ancient Kushite Empire, which was all one people. So some of the practices that the Arab later on uh, um, um, did was taught to them by the ancient black man that understood about making a pyramid to Mecca. Well, they used to make this pyramid to this spaceship, and they used to have a Hajj type period to Heliopolis, and, uh, the city of Om. Then they come to find out that it was peculiar that the actual animals would make a pyramid to the Kaaba in Mecca. But in this book documented that you can get the paperback book now by Zachariah Stitching, Stay Away to Heaven. This is the hardback that came out in 1980. Which now you can get the paperback for like four dollars. He documents that underneath the Kaaba is a room. Now come to find out that what had happened in the first intermediate period in Kemet when the actual Egyptian I guess I can't move outside of nothing the table or nothing. Outside of the actual, come to find out that the actual, um, at the time that the, the, the first intermediate period when the actual priesthood fell down and they started fighting against the priesthood in the first intermediate period, this was the first time the priest of Kenneth broke down. You study the intermediate period for those who want to study. They found out that the spaceship was actually broke, destroyed, based on priesthood. And some of it was carted away in certain places. They believe, as well as Zachariah Sitchin, that the, under the base of the Kaaba is a room with all kinds of sacred artifacts and pieces of that spaceship of Osiris up the top is underneath the Kaaba in Mecca. Then all of a sudden we see the Muslims doing the same pyramids and making the same hajj that the ancient Egyptians used to do with the spaceship. Well, it's, it, it's ironic that Amr Elias Muhammad had mentioned a long time ago that underneath the Kaaba in Mecca is all kinds of sacred artifacts and spiritual things in the world just as sacred as the Ark of the Covenant. So then we see them having the same pyramid as they used to have this pyramid based on the Egyptian text in Kemet based on the spaceship. You see? So these are some things that's very interesting on how this whole Hajj to Mecca starts. Which we understand in the Holy Quran it says this is the God who created both male and female from one thing the ejaculated semen and will create all things anew. He is the Lord of Sirius. Which in ancient Kenneth, the Lord of Sirius would also be Osiris. Or Osar, which is the Lord of the perfect black. So if they used to make a pyramid to dog on the city of Om to make a to the Lord of Sirius, they do the same thing because the Kaaba represents Allah, which is also the Lord of Sirius. Which is would be, and which would be uh, um, Osiris or Osiris and Timothy, we understand the same relationship because that was all one people. You understand it, Chip? Yeah. All right, whether it be Awad, Melchizedek, Osar, Matar, Medrugal, Atan, Metatron, or Yahweh, all that is the same one God and the God one, which means the God is black. Chip? Yeah. Also, his ancient name would be Har-Ur, which would be the Heru. The elder, which would be the form of Sut, that dies and rises up as Heru the younger. Osiris dies and rises up as Heru the younger too. His son, and when he rises on the resurrection, has a great feast. supposed to rise in Atlanta, he rises as Heru too. So that means that Osiris is the same as Sut, which is the god of the triple black, which is the same of Awas. So we're talking about the same one god who is black, but has a mother. I always got to get this. There's no such thing as the Father. There's only the Son, and that Son has the Mother. And when that Most High God is gone, like I say over and over again, she is. Heaven is only a veil to the Great Mother. And the God that you worship in all of your religions is only a grain of sand on a lonely beach compared to the vast of the 
of his mother. And that particular body is nothing but a reflection of the great mother. The triple magnets of space called Leda, called Newt, called Abbott, called Tyre, called Babylon. It's also called a form of Lilith in the Bible that Adam wanted to get on top of and she said, no, me equal and you don't get on top of me. And then they threw her hold out and charged her for the sins of man. You understand what I'm saying? So you deal with a religion that is anti-woman and woman is all there is. We're going to get into that in a few minutes. Now, also in the book called Hamlet's Bill where they, where they take mythology and break it into science and show you that the ancient Egyptians and all the ancient people did science and physics through their mythology that the actual Kaaba, the breakdown of Kaaba comes from the planet Saturn and the planet Saturn, Saturn is nothing but a dimension of where our house used to be and also it's called the black planet and Saturn is also broken down on the number 418 and the number 418 is melanin and the Kaaba is nothing but melanin and it's an actual piece of Saturn Saturn used to be an incubator house when we first see the planet when, 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 when the Earth was a form of Saturn and the original man out of the they're talking about got formed on Saturn. So when the Kaaba, when they say that the Kaaba is that of the ancient atomic man, they're talking about that black man and that substance of Saturn. All in metaphysical science. Now, like I said, we talk about this particular mantra. It comes from a guy, St. Kumara. And it says, light will overcome, light will make us one, light from the blue fire sun, which is serious, commands us all free. And Saint Kumara, or Sanat Kumara, is the god of Sirius. He is, he was an Egyptian priest. He was an Egyptian priest by the name of Ratum Sume, based on the channel. Ratum Sume. He stands on the right hand side of Mayat, which means he brings the laws from Sirius. And his name is St. Kumara, which was a black man and was a priest of Ra. Uh, he's on the right hand side of Amaya. And his mantra is, like will overcome, like will make us one, like from the blue side, fire, sun, command us all free. If you say this mantra, you can raise your vibratory rate along with meditation. Check. These are some other keys that we're giving. And, I'm, and, I, and, and I appreciate the sister of uh, Alfred and, uh, and, 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 and her um, uh, king. Um, um, Head Rufa actually doing this stuff for me and all of this beautiful and I love it and all of He's the master of the, of the computers in the whole nine yard too and everything else and all Now, everything that the white man will do, remember, is going to backfire by your own hand. So all the destruction that's coming down the tube, we're going to bypass that because it's all so meant for him because his cycle is up. Now, we also talk about the white city of the central sun that's in inner Africa and in the inner plains. It is the place where the gods dwell, but it's not on the outer plains, but the white man has been trying to find this white central city of the central sun, which is talking about the Christ light of the central sun. The central sun being serious, but it's talking about this particular earth, and it's on the inner plains of Africa, so it's talking about the subterranean world, and he cannot find it. And our ancient gods also reside there, so these bold young gods come from the white city of the central sun. Uh, uh, the central sun of Ife. And Ife also is, a, uh, is, is a, the chief divination system of the Europe. Now, the religions that we know, not scriptures, not the ancient stories of Moses or Muhammad, but the religions that these scriptures are being taught by is your slavery. It's keeping you in slavery. Therefore, you know the only thing, like I said, the white man in the last days is moved by his TV set, and his TV set is what's keeping you down. And he don't put nothing on there to bring you to a higher life. Why in the hell do you think, why in the hell do you think he's going to give you something positive by putting a preacher on every other channel? That's how you know that those preachers are keeping you down. Because you don't need nobody hollering at you to give you good moral teaching that you already knew by 12, 12 years old. Check. And five or six disco songs, like I said, and passing the hat five or six times. Now, also, we know that Africa is the dumbest place on the dog on earth, other than the indigenous people, the actual colonized people, ain't got their minds on nothing. Now, this is not all we're putting down Africa, but we understand that you are the ones that's, that's blessed with most of the science. Now, we also know also, too, that, in fact, that every African leader, it was on TV today about Africa, and 
and, this, and, and, and all of the, uh, the uh, all the English people and all these doggone missionaries, and we know that when the missionaries came, they had the Bible and we had the land. When we were there, they had the land and we had the damn Bible. <laughs> Africa is nothing but one big hub of Christianity. Now you know damn well that Christianity was the ultimate supreme. Why would Africa be the worst place on earth for human conditions at this particular time? Death decaying and dying in ignorance, and, and in there every country is ruled by Christianity. That's because the mercenaries know that not the scriptures that were started in Africa, but Christianity are called up science by the white man in the King James Version is a slave religion and a slave way of teaching our doctrines of our ancient Bibles where 18 books of them books are gone as well as the heaven realm of the book of Enoch is gone out of the doggone Bible. So this Christianity is nothing but a slave religion and it's all over Africa. As a matter of fact, they were proud to say that every single African leader, most of them, is trained by missionaries. And this is why Africa is down based on the Christian doctrine is a slave doctrine. And if they're not trained in Christianity, they're trained in Orthodox Islam. What is the damn thing? Both of them slave religions. You understand? Because none of it is the esoteric Islam or the esoteric Christianity is talking about raising yourself up to God. Which you can find in your Bible if your damn eyes are open. But it's the same old praying to God and loving the damn white man and universal brotherhood and the white man is our friend but we all Christians and the same goddamn Christians put the fucking AIDS up in them and yeah. they killing people. In Uganda and, 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 all, and, and Uganda and all those out here under the same Christian shit is the same people that brought the damn colonization in the first place. One good Christian nation that took over South Africa and took over the whole nine yards and killed us under the same Christian animal. And this is what the slavery of dog on Africa also do. Now, I want to get into a little bit of the mysteries of sex. Go a little something like this. I told you that the gods gave you the gift of sex to open yourself up. But every time I ask, Mel Shepard is, See, y'all think it's some old spiritual stuff and you pull a board in there. Ooh, ooh, but the damn board on the It ain't like that. They told us to take your time back if it ain't necessary. That's what they told the brothers and sisters I heard on the mounds in Texas. The other day, take your time back if it ain't necessary. So, I go up in there and steal it from the crowd. I say, well, I ain't taking back nothing. It's already in my mind. So they, they got, they're not going to come in the book. They trust me. They leave the store when I come in. Oh, he's good there. I be putting all the books in my stack. Can <laughs> y'all put the leave me up in this damn store? And then I get into the spirit of the story, you don't know why. I be, I be, this will happen, I done got all the books, ain't really nothing else. I be, you leave me, okay, I'll be like, I'm gonna go ahead and get you something. I say, okay, go right here. <laughs> Shit, I go in this store, they can put the leave me up in the book, all the things. Well, that's what he said, y'all well done, because you only take that what's yours. That's right. There's no such thing as stealing, but the simple fact that everything is a table printed on the show.
made two good things. <laughs>
The black man ain't got nothing but a ritual and there's no more than the damn people hollering in that church. You see what I'm saying? That's all they do. It's have some dog on barbecue roll sales. That's what time is. So this is the mystery of sex. But if he was in the real mystery system, he would have had some suits up in there. So the only thing was up in there was a bunch of hard heads. There wasn't none of us no faggots. So therefore, we would not get with no real mystery system stuff. Check. All right. The next stuff was, is on the channel, like I said before, on the radio. Like I said on the radio, I went to New York and I, I was broke and, and I was up there and I spoke for three hours. We started at 11 o'clock that night and we got out at 3 o'clock. And it was a sister, it was another channel that I always need to get the sister to do the stuff. I think God sent them to me, which I'm blessed. And she said, watch the channel. I said, well, you ain't getting out of this house tonight then. And so we set up on the floor until 7 that morning and we got a whole lot of stuff. And one of the things was about the Minister Lewis Farrakhan. Now she didn't know anything about it. I said, well, let me answer the question. Now, mind you, when I answer the question, the spirit now is channeling, so what is coming through is not her own thing. So I asked her, I said, well, what's the deal on the Minister Lewis Farrakhan? They said, well, between 1977 and 1990, he had the Master Farad Muhammad as a spiritual channel. It was coming through him. And you had, so the Bible said his father was all conducted by the Master of Rock Muhammad, who left him around 1990. And his mission was to reacquaint people with the teachings of um, um, Ahmad Elijah Muhammad. Now, I asked her, well, and then after that, after 1191, the doggone um, prostate cancer set in. You God, ain't no prostate cancer set in nothing. So now, I also asked her, um, also asked her was, um, well, what is going to become? She said, well, they had had it so that the Honorable Louis Farrakhan could never be killed by anybody on the earth plane. They had had him back up to that point, and the white man knew it. But for some reason, they, neither of their words, that's why I think you need to get that out, but to back up what I'm saying, I'm not telling you anything, I'm telling you these things on a spiritual manifestation. And I will personally meet with Mr. Louis Farrakhan in September when he comes to speak at Clark College and charge him $20,000 to speak at Clark College. Now, and I will be at a dinner that's held by the president of the Clark College in the whole nine yards because I went to Clark, so I got that hookup. Now, so I'll be up in there and I'll tell you what I need to tell you. Or what the spiritual sister said, maybe we can help him if he don't think that he's a holy apostle and I'm just some stupid nigga out here running my mouth. God is going to come like a thief in the night and you never know. The woman on the street might have a key to your salvation and you might miss it. You know what I'm saying? And it's ain't no but see, if Jesse Jackson not a king and told us something, he might listen to it. Because obviously he's been bucking for the egg dog on friendship to have an alliance with the Uncle Tom. So now she said that what has happened since they had had him, they had given him, they had granted him no death. They said that ultimately what had happened, the reason why the angel left him is because the money that them dog on final calls and all the people that have been selling, he has been pocketed. It's been going in his pocket. You know he put a little restaurant in, put a restaurant there. He is living like a billionaire off the money, and you know they got them niggas out there selling crumbs now. Now what kind of shit is that? You're a little rich and all and you up there selling crumbs. That means you the best dressed paper boy and dog on fruit sales. And now they're selling bananas and crumbs and all, and I'm like, what the hell is this? You see? And so now what has happened is, what has happened is, they say this is, this is the words coming from the spiritual thing. I think you all need to know. Now, the doggone nation can come and challenge me on the first part. I might say I'm lying, I'm a little bit naked, I'm telling you the whole I'm telling you straight Because I was like this. Well, she was telling me this stuff. And this is a spiritual channel. But now, sometimes you are a victim of your own dog of preaching. You don't stuff all the time say the black man is God and nobody believes you. And then when the gods start exercising their power, you don't believe the black man is God. So nobody can give you no spiritual stuff in the spiritual world. So therefore, you see, the stuff starts coming against you. So they said that he was pocketing some stuff and not only that because he started preaching And also Jesse Jackson and Ben Chambers and all these other Tom Negroes, they said because he started lining himself up with the people like that, they said what is happening is eventually they're going to have to kill him. They 
they say the, the, the white man could not kill them, they say, but, in, but, but by the end of the year, and somewhere, by the end of the year, and somewhere by the, uh, somewhere by the, either the end of this year, or somewhere in the middle of next year, the brotherhood, Mel Kevin and them, or Master Brown, I'm going to take him out. So we need to get to the brother, tell the brother, whatever he needs to be doing, he needs to be straightening his ass up. But I'll have that chance. Now another thing, he's going to be speaking at Clark College, which is a doggone, any, any, any black college is owned by the blue lady. So now they feel it comfortable to have you there. Obviously the white man say, let up off of him, we got him under control. And now he can speak there under the disguise of liberation, because in actuality, it's not about doggone taking a million man march to Washington, D.C. I thought that was Martin Luther King. This is a minister of the I'm talking about that. Martin in Washington, D.C. Well, huh? I'm saying if they take a million people to march in D.C., the white man be like, okay, that's who. That means I got a million niggas in one spot. I can drop a bomb here. Now, I thought that was Martin Luther King, a 19 dog on 60 feet stuff. He's talking about having a million man marching in all the year. Well, I thought that was what? You, can you believe this shit? <laughs> Did you ever think of my audience that I'm the last that is contradictory. You identify this white man as the devil. Now you gonna tell me and tell me that he's the devil, and all of a sudden you can have a million man watching the white man go, oh wow, I'm scared now. I guess you better give him back the country. A million man march. So they saying that now he's lined up, he's done the dog on civil rights all stuff. Just like the rest of the civil rights all stuff. And so he's looking for his alliance and all, and ultimately, so Mr. Farrar, Mr. Collins was going around and telling everybody that don't know who was, 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 was taking up for the law, and then they see the black people like, what's up, what the man going with the NAACP for? They're all right. And as soon as he got in trouble with the NAACP, the Congressional Black Caucus and the Urban League is repudiated his ass. Right after the alliance from Mr. Farrakhan, that was letting you know that that was an agreement with the devil that will not stand. You see, and like I told you before, they got styles styles on the astral plane. And if you did it in the spiritual realm, you protect it. If you did it on their realm, they own that, so therefore you hate it. And they don't fear you. So they're saying that they're going to take him out for the simple fact that he done y'all go Jericho because he is preaching another gospel now. He go on y'all on Bible Waters and say, yeah, we can have a damn life with you. Now did he say that? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't want to put no lies out. Did you see the interview and they asked him about would he work with the damn Jews? And he said, yeah. Did he say that? Am I lying? I want to correct me on the tape, but I don't want him to get out like I told the fucking lie. But that's what I heard when I talked to you. You see what I'm saying? Then, I'm saying, so all of a sudden, this dialogue, my thing is, is if you identify this man as the devil, why have a press conference? Remember all the lies Muhammad told him now, stay away from them cameras because they point at things. You know what I'm saying? Now, we know there's a whole lot of things that went on with Operation Dirty Tricks and Malcolm Day, but still, yeah, I don't give a dog on. If the man had four billion children, you don't go to the white man and tell the dog on the devil it's supposed to be against you against your master to pull you up out of the hook. I don't give a damn what's up. That's just like your mama. I don't care if your mama a drunk and a whore. You don't go to the white man and put your mama stuff on damn national TV. If it's your mama, that's our problem. We'll handle ourselves. We naturally ain't gonna go to the enemy. So not the dog gonna speak against Malcolm X, but what I'm trying to say is that this type of thing here, why go to a press conference to say that we are sitting down Khalid Muhammad, when you know damn well Khalid Muhammad been speaking this shit for the last nine years. Right? For the last nine years, so some say, you personally all the tape, and we want to take it to go out, you know, so uh, the problem is damn about us. We can just take it only for the people on the street. Right. I'm damn trying to live from the middle up and they ain't gonna never believe. <laughs> and because I say a few cuss words, if they can't get the knowledge of it for a few cuss words, obviously they, they don't, they ain't getting no way. You see what I'm saying? So we can express ourselves better than cuss words. <laughs> is 
we had to know that the power who had that thought based on the challenge is none other than Marie White of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Now, Marie White of Earth, Wind, and Fire, they say he was a messenger and he put together that to give you music from Sirius. They say it was a little commercialized, but to give you music from Sirius uh, to lift you up. And everybody knows that you are those people. Some of you had the enjoyment, like me, to be enlightened and picked up by the music of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Okay? Now, as a matter of fact, I, I was pleased and I brought these album covers because you also know that Patah who hit that song made sure that he hooked up with an artist by the name of Sushi, a Japanese fella, and they gave you these beautiful album covers of the of the, uh, different things. This is called I Am. You see the embryo egg and you see the old man here. Right here you see some colonnades of uh, uh, the actual, some actual things from the temple of Karnak in the hypostale hall. If you look real close, I'll take the album out because I don't want y'all scratching up my shit. <laughs> if you look real close, I don't want it to drop on the floor and I go all damn. No more ribbon and fire tonight, but that's not true. If you look real close, you will see on this, on this album cover. Now, I wanted to try to put it up on the screen so everybody will know. So they'll know which one I'm talking about. Now, I'm going to pass this around for you to see. In this album cover, you see Kimmy. Then the next thing you see is medieval Europe. Then you see New York City. Down here you see something like Rome or Chaldea. And up here you see the actual, then you see some points of the ships here that came like ships in the town of Columbus. You see New York City, then you see a space agent right here, you see the dog on UFOs coming in. They said not only was Patah who te had tested off, they said he was aware of who he was. It was all the grand, grand um, design. And also, now, if you look, you see them also, you know this album cover. See, we have a lot. You see this album cover here. And this particular album cover, you see them all with the pyramids behind. White pyramids. You can pass these around. Now, one of the greatest ones of all time, now you don't have to, you can show that just once and just pass them around so they can see the ones. Good. Now, one of the greatest ones of all time is you know the one of all dogs from 19... 77, 78, basically, because it carried on in 1977, 78. Now, if you notice, you will see the white pyramid on how the pyramid actually used to look. Look at it in the camera. How the pyramid actually used to look. It used to have a star. In an actuality, the pyramid was a white limestone, and it had a black capstone, and when it would hit the star, it would light up, and you would see it for miles around. And down here, you see Ramesses. Temple, Ramesses took tombs at Abel Timbell, all done up in cover. And then on this side, you see the different signs of different religions, and you see the pyramid, and you also see the eye and head root in the pyramid. Right? Remember these? And you see all of that. Also, you see the space behind it. But then you see the signs of all religions. And then he has one right here, and he's showing all of this particular um, earth and body album is the sign of Jupiter. He made a song on this album, his name was Jupiter. So it, it, it feels beautiful at this time for me to find out this channel and the sisters were been there when I called and got the channel on the only other. I was sitting on the bed jamming it and I said, man, oh, I said, I got to get the channel on where this man was hooked up. Too many things going down, he'll not be hooked up. Also, the sister uh, was, was enlightening me that he was also a student of Devil Blair in Chicago. And you know Devil Blair is one of the better traditions also too. Now, this is one of the ones also. Now, then he went on 1980, this is 1981, he did the one called Rays. And he actually showed you a uh, 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 computer age, and he also showed you a picture of Offset, and also two, and Egyptians, and right here some computer things that also given his message. And right here you see the hand coming down, and then you see the sun and you see the earth. Different spiritual manifestations of what's also going on in these particular ones, where you can get um, the simple ones. Now, this came out in 19, you can pass, you pass these around for those people, some of you younger people who didn't, who never had the privilege of being so. I'm only 32, but then again, I, I ended high school in 1976. I was in 1976, so that means that I was right in the middle of this whole nine yards and stuff. So even though, you know, I, I basically grew up in the 70s, and I was in college by 1980. So therefore, when we say growing up and stuff, some of you people were young adults at that time, so you even really got into it. Now, if this one came out in 1980, no, let me give you another one first. This one 
Rockin' also came out in 1988 as the greatest hits album, The Best of the Urban Empire Volume 1. And if you see this, you'll see the sign of the Phoenix, which the Phoenix is supposed to rise up in Atlanta. And the Phoenix is also the sign that you have on your dollar bill that they changed into the eagle. But this is the sign of the Phoenix, which is also the sign of Heru rising up, or also Osar rising up. And here you see a picture of King Chuck with the, with the uh, pyramid behind it, and then you also, also see the sign of Jesus. You pass these around and show the people also too. Now, by the time 1991, 19, 1983 rolled around, when they were trying to get almost petering out, he did the last one they ever did with the artist Sushi, and did this one called Power Life. And as you can see, it had the chakras on it. As you can see, you want to put a close up on this one. As you can see, it has the chakras on the actual Power Life. And has a man and stuff. So they were telling you that all this stuff was spiritually coded the whole time. You can pass them this way and y'all try to go that way with us. Now, then this is one of the few. Now, we have the one because they weren't doing albums then. Now, if you see the last one that came out, it's called Millennia. And on this one, if you see the actual CD page, you will see the pyramid in the space. And also in the photo line, they have the Temple of Love Song. And they have several ones in the Millennia tape, which is the new one that just came out, Fall 93. And this one that came out in 1989, 1990, was heritage that you see all types of African print also, too. Now, Maurice White went on to make an album in 1985 that most people never got a chance to hear called Maurice White, for Tom Who Had Felt Soft. Now, it's interesting about this particular album done by his Columbo production, and he had his symbol of the African instrument Columbo that has his production symbol. It's interesting about this because on this album, if you didn't hear it, it was probably one of the apex of his career because what Phoenix Horns could not do with breath, he made sure that he did on this album to synthesize his size. So you know that up part, he got even higher on this album than most people slept on this album. One thing about this album is, to let you know he was really on it, he has a, he has a song on this album, has a song on this album called, it's called Children of Africa. And it goes, born in Africa, children of the sun, going to take your place as the chosen one. And he said, on the wings of ISIS. And now he really dropped it on the last song, one of the last songs of the album. Then he has another one saying, you believe in magic, telling you the things on the metaphysical round. One of the best albums that ever put out by Patal, who made that for Maurice White. Now, the reason why I said this is because now you don't have to run and buy the album. There's a box set that came out last year with about 52 songs plus seven unreleased songs, and you get five CDs in this particular. You know, you get three CDs with 52 songs of everything. This is the box set of everything they did. Plus, you get a booklet with every single thing that ever went on. Plus, they give you pictures, a list of all the albums, and you can actually have a picture of all the albums here on the booklet, in the booklet. So now, this was a box set called Eternal Dance that came out. Uh, some places are high, but you can get it for $39. I'll pay $39 for it. And plus, but if we get black media, we're not going to get it cheaper. So we'll try to do that, but this is one they call the Eternal Dance, which is the box set also, too. But I wanted to run that past you because I figured for some of you people that would be uh, some type of um, confirmation to you or some type of affirmation or confirmation to you that you brothers and sisters who enjoy it. Check? Yes. All right. And I was glad to hear it. They also said that George Clinton, you know, the mothership was one of them. They said that he was a fallen son. But that meant that he had already risen to the level of God and completed the creation to even become a star. You see what I'm saying? And like the script is saying, one of the movies you need to go see is The Lion King, because it's talking about them rising up the stars in the movie, and it's metaphysically coded. Now, uh, so they say he was a fallen star, and they say he did a certain amount of the mothership and the whole down. Even though he put a little bit of smoke and weed up in that baby. But then again, they also said, too, we got a channel that the weed came from that. Actually, a uh, reaper came from Sirius. But they said, but they said that the point about it is, Based on some of the things that's put into it now, that's what gives you memory last. Plus, they didn't smoke the shit 24 hours. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, we always overdo everything. <laughs> you know, so this is some stuff that's actually 
what's going on as well as Roy L. So some of the people remember Roy L in the whole nine yards. But a lot of stuff was coming out of the 70s. But Roy L was from Egypt and Chaldee. Cool. That's cool too. I'm glad that. That's one of my favorites. What you got? Five minutes. Now we got to put in another tape because I got to get this last piece. You got some more? Got to get this last piece. What I came here for. Y'all bear with me. I've got to get this last piece. This is going to blow your mind. I never said it before in my life, and when I was up in New York, it came to me, giving you know, people this story, and I got to give you this story. Because this is what I came for. I got to get it now. This you got my old put in A prophecy 
of things to come. Check? The first part is my true actual life that started in 1968, around the time that they shot Martin Luther King and doggone that Kennedy person got shot in the head. And a whole lot of stuff jumped off in 1968. But in 1968, I was in the second grade. And I met up with a friend, and we have been friends since 1968, and this particular friend is by the name of Brandon Brown. Now the story goes a little something like this. We were both artists. So I went, I'm trained in art at Liberty College in Clark. Now we were both artists, and we've been drawing since 1968. As a matter of fact, they had passed me in 1968 by my mother being a school teacher. She knew the principal. She said, you can put that nigga back in here. Because he didn't learn nothing. He sat up in the classroom and ran around and knew all year long. And didn't learn nothing. You see what I'm saying? But it didn't do no good. Yeah, I didn't learn until I got ready anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it was a waste of year in 1969. Now, what had happened was this. We used to sit in the back of the class and draw all the time. We got around the sixth grade and the seventh grade and we were group, we were, we were in classroom, in and out of class, and we've been friends since 1966 or 66, grade. Now there's two things in this story. One thing, I come from a black middle class family. I got a, I come from a, a family of school teachers where well, I am whole entire family with the college. And some of my people was in the first black college when they started. So I didn't know nothing but doggone uh, another life of achievement for whatever the hell that worth, whether it be miseducation or what. But I was so we as a childhood, we didn't too much more for jack shit. We always had all the toys, we always had all the nice clothes and the whole nine yards. But my father and my mother was married, they had separated, they had separated when we was younger, so I didn't see my father when he was in a, in a castle. Now it's interesting about this story because come to find out that my father was drowned by one of his best friends thrown in a fucking river. Chad, now don't that story sound funny? We didn't know where he died. The brother who told me yeah, that nigga was killed. But we, we weren't there. We were in South Carolina because my mother came back to South Carolina out there. Now the key to this is this. I was raised by two strong women. Yeah, or cut your ass in a minute. You talking about ninjas and groups, all that, they had nothing on my grandma and my mom. You see what I'm saying? So it wasn't no doggone, no, uh, no, no, what you would call uh, uh, democracy in the grill. Not about these two black women. Either you said it, because you got cut in half. You see what I'm saying? And they used to do all that stuff about when you go get your own switch on the sort of And I remember one time, <laughs> this is funny, because my grandmother, what's the bag of peas on this nigga head over here? And then so he got mad and told him, you better pick up every damn one of them. <laughs> <laughs> now, it, it's stuff. And he and my grandmother had taught half the whole town and half the people in South Carolina. She taught. And the first thing people used to say, I knew your grandmother, she taught me. Grown me. I knew your grandmother, she taught me. That woman cut my ass. And I mean, fan up, curtain rod, a chair leg, whatever. She beat behind me. My mother did the same thing. I remember getting a damn beat for almost close to an hour. So I think I told her. And I said, Dad, I don't want him and I don't run out of teeth. This is the kind of stuff they talk about. But this, they didn't play. The black woman didn't play. So now, all these kids out here doing all this crazy stuff, that's because they didn't have no mama like mine. Got no. Hey, kill your behind too. And she didn't have to do no this DL look. You know, be some place with this DL look and you know what time it is. So y'all all know about that kind of black woman. Alright. The story was, I came from a middle class family and I was an artist. My friend Randy came from the poorest people in Mullet, South Carolina. Now you got to be poor be poor and but they tell you right now that if they tell you right now that black people, black poor people look live better in the South than poor people in the city. Because most people own their own home. Oh, they own and, you know, and their own land or something. So now to be poor in Mother South Carolina, population six thousand, you got to be poor. You see what I'm saying? 
Now his mother, Alberta Snow, she would take him and go and borrow money from these farmers. Then say, well, don't worry about it in the winter. My son will work, my children will work it off for you in the summer. And they used to be cropping the back of hard down like a dog, working out and, and, and didn't get paid nothing because this man because the mama borrowed the money. And the dog gonna crack up, the crack up. Uh, a farmer used to say, I got to pay y'all something, something, y'all got to get something, but they were the best workers in the team. But anyway, they used to go around raggedy, nasty, and everything. But I'm in the dog on the sixth and seventh grade, and in the fifth grade, what happened was this. People were saying, man, what is Irene Shaw and Betsy and him at the school teachers, children, Boy, that boy doing hand and mind with crazy ass man clown and Albert Snow Child. But me being a, a child, it went like this. All I know is Randy was my best friend and I loved him. So it didn't make a difference. So what we used to do is, and my brother can tell you when I got in the field grade, I started running the street. Because they seen a school chief teaching children some of the worst ones. They see them the same. So I started running the street. So me and Randy would go downtown and see them. You put it in a crack of stone, we used to see it. And I didn't have to do because I had everything I wanted at the crack store. But all I know is I love Randy. Now, what had happened was this. When I got into about the seventh grade and the eighth grade, Randy missed too many days in school and had to stay back until the eighth grade. I went on to high school, you know, I'm in the girl. And that hard guy is back with me. He just shut up from himself, H E. Now, the deal is this, when he came back, he was a man that had gone back in the time. So I was actually meeting a person that was about around 8th or ninth grade, you see. I'm 26, he's 27. And I'm meeting this particular person at this age. And I'm like, well, now, you know, Randy, they don't wear the shirts with me. You know, you know the silk shirt two boys that said with the little people printed on them and stuff? And the butter black cops, they ran, they don't wear them but no more, man. They, you know, Randy, you know, they got to trim that, that grow up, and, and, and you know, I said, you know, you, there's certain things you do as adults. They don't wear them damn bell bottom pants with the poly up so, with the, I mean, that thick girl in here. I said, you know, they don't, that, Randy, this is, the, this is going on to the 90s all They don't wear that. So the whole thing is he had gone back in time. This is the way he was. You understand? Now, the key to this is this. Now, we're going to put that story on hold. We go to the story. What happened was, so I, at this time, about, about 1980, 1990, I died. Didn't even want to pursue the shoe thing because all I wanted to do was read all this stuff. Come to find out that the brotherhood, the whole time, that thing, oh, it's still working, I guess. The brotherhood the whole time was directing me, and all I had, all I, all I could do is get into this. Now the story comes to the series of events that I started having in 1988. This is how it goes. About, and this is now this is a futuristic prophetic thing. About 12 o'clock in the afternoon, the sun disappears from the sky. There is no sun. Only thing you see is these little digital numbers flipping around. In the sky, everybody can see this thing. And it clicks up until about 8 o'clock and it stops on 8 o'clock. Then, and I check this story out because it gets better. Then, these big ass screens start showing up in the sky. Big, huge screens. They are everywhere. All of that electricity cuts off. What is going to be on the screen is not on every TV station in New Jersey, every TV station. Check. Now this story going to go somewhere because I done got the juice on this story when I met up with they was. So the only TV station you got, the same thing that's on the screen is there. Plus a screen is in everybody's house. At this time there ain't no electricity, so therefore, if you can't get home wherever you are stationed, there's screens in the sky. Screens on the wall and on the TV set. At this time, if you're blind, you can see the screen. If you sit, everything is on pause, so the only thing you got to do is see the screen. You don't have to eat, you don't get thirsty, you don't get nothing. You're in a pause. Everything is in a pause. So they ain't no damn fun and everything stops dead in its tracks. 
Okay? Check. These screens going on, and everybody can see, and then you don't have to. Only thing you got to do is watch the screen. Everything on call. All right. They come and get me, tell me that I got to go somewhere in time to get the sun back. So they take me in this room, trim my body up, muscle down, all this stuff just hook me up, grow these long threads, grow a fair old beard, put on this fair old garb, and they tell me I got to go back in time to kill it. Now the deal with that is this. They're saying, and this is what triggered these things around 1990, because I got to show you this picture. This is what I brought this picture. I told you there was something that they put in children's books because they don't want a lot of people to see. Now, there's a guy by the name of Edwin Pointer. He, they did a, he was interested in the reconstruction of Kenneth, and he did a picture, some pictures in, 18, in 1867. Edwin Pointer, he did something called Israel and Egypt. Now I want to pass these around and show you these pictures. Remember I told you that the ruins that you see in Kenneth, that's far from a shadow of what it was. This is a reconstruction of what this thing actually looked like. Now when he did it, he did all the pharaohs black. And not only did he, did, did he do the pharaohs black, not only that, he did a procession of where they had an actual thing where the pharaohs were going into the temple of Luxor. Now this picture was done by, used by Cecil B. Mills to create the Ten Commandments and they got off this picture at the, uh, um, at the, at the art, um, Gilham Art Gallery in London, 1867. Now when he did this picture, the only way he could get money from it in England, he had, the people in England didn't buy it, they wanted the biblical story. So he had to add in some, some mulatto looking Hebrew. But you can see clearly that he had to paint the Hebrews in front of the original scene, but he wasn't interested in doing that. He was interested in reconstructing Kemet. He was interested in reconstructing Kemet. Let me get this right. He was interested in reconstructing Kemet to a certain level on what it used to look like. Now, what I'm about to go back into to get the sun back is we got to travel back in time to a time where the only time black people cussed his last stand is when we was in our grandeur, when we was on top of this thing, when the ball was in our court and how it looked. And by doing this, it can automatically open up the way black people are in their mind on what kind of God level they were. Okay? Now, the key this is black people and everybody watching this. Get even scarier than that. Now, it's called Israel and Egypt, and when I saw this picture, I died with other pictures. I'm going to pass this around and show it to you. I couldn't find these things, and I had to search hard to find them. They come out of 19th century Victorian style. Now, one key thing about this is, this was a children's book. People had work that they actually printed it in, and we want to pass these around. So pass those around and show people how this stuff looks. Now, get my album cover back, we're going to get you told on there right there. Now, so I see these pictures, and automatically in 1990, when I started seeing these pictures, and I can't show you half of them, I started dying. Now, y'all bear with me because you gotta hear this story. At least you gotta get it on the video so you can go back and study the story. These are other pictures of how Kenneth used to look when the dog on when the actual when the actual um, temples were constructed. This is the temple of Heru and Edu. I wanna I wanna hang on, this is what you call a colonnade. You see that the people in France also made this. I'm going to put it up to the camera. A colony. These are the pictures of temples in Kemet that I show on all of my videos. Okay? Now, you can pass these some of these around and show people how this stuff looks. Now, this one is very key. Now, let's get back to the story. All right. If you look at these pictures closely, you see the Egyptians are black. Yeah. Now, this is the key. Now, I got to go back. So I said, now, how am I going back? They said, we're going to send you a spaceship. Now, mind you, this before I even got into the spaceship thing. The spaceship that they sent me was called a Comedic Lane Kepler. And it was shaped like Kepler. But well, it didn't have the beams, but it was shaped like a beetle with legs. And it was a kind of metallic, greenish looking ship. Big, huge thing. Now, they got to send me back because some 
something is in, like in, in, in Kemet that I gotta get now. Okay? So, it's called a hermetic lady capital. These huge things. Big spaceship. Now they done gave me detail files and all of this stuff. Now I'm gonna go back in time. So the ship lives up. Everybody, all the people that's watching this, y'all all right to get into it? All the people watching this story on these big screens now, the ship lifts up. It's such a loud thing for the whole world to hear this thing louder than thunder. Now, think about this particular big screen. It's in every language on in the world, and these screens are all over the world. So this is something everybody sees. Now, I'm not jacking myself. I'm getting ready to tell you the story. So the ship lifts up and takes me back, so-called Kimmy, and I land in the desert. When I land in the desert, I see an old corroded-ass pyramid. I see some old beat-up temples. And I say, you didn't take, I didn't need no spaceship, but I could have got out there and desert to do this. To go back to the same Kimmy that's here now. What's going on? This big spaceship landed out here, I'm getting off the spaceship. I'm saying, what the hell? Right. 
So I'm seeing this stuff and I'm imagining and it's so beautiful until I have never seen anything like this. You see what I'm saying? This is still on the physical ramp. I'm seeing these beautiful ass temples. Now they taking me to meet the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh is sitting outside of the temple of Luster, which is everybody away from that picture. Did everybody get a chance to see the Israel in Egypt? The cover picture, where is it? Hold it up. Keep it moving. Yeah, did y'all see it? Keep it moving. Keep the picture moving so they can see your picture. Don't hog the picture. Please. Look. I'm sitting outside in Luxor. They're taking me to the actual Pharaoh. Sitting, sitting in the front of the Temple of Luxor, and all of the damn paint is on it. All of the hieroglyphics is painted, and it's beautiful. Okay. I'm getting up, they got me on their back, and the Pharaoh is sitting outside. He's all happy because he knows who's coming. He was seeing me trying to get through the colony. I'm getting up on the dog on Pharaoh, and I'm coming closer and closer to the Pharaoh. And I get up on the damn Pharaoh, and guess who the Pharaoh is? <laughs> Randy Brown, my friend. Uh, all that South Carolina. He's happy because he knows what the hell is going on. You see? They say that some of these niggas out here, you, the mob, some of these people out here, you think much about it, was God the other day. Even before I even got into the metaphysics. It's Randy Brown. He's all in his car, and he's all on the payroll, and he's at. I look at him and break down crying again. He breaks down crying. You see what I'm saying? Because in this world, some of us achieved a certain thing, some of us was not fortunate. But in this world, he was the man. Check. To let you know that who you are. You see, see this whole story on how we can hit in the head. Randy Brown is the damn Pharaoh. And he's back. Now, the priests don't take me. They take me back to Atlantis. And they take me up on Sirius. And I'm going to see God. When I get to God, I see my own self. Which is the moral from the story is, don't pray to nobody outside of yourself. Because you are the connection with the most high. Check? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to see the God in the whole wide world. Okay. The last part of the story is this. I'll let you go. Last part of the story is this. I said, but still yet, the people back on earth ain't got the sun back. And I ain't seen nothing yet but some, some pardon or some reunion of the gods. Right? Then, and so I said, so what? So they said, well, we got a little game we got to play with you. A little thing you got to do. And that is this. Number one, in order for your people to survive, to get back to what they were. So this was a boy. This was a freeze right now. A vortex. You got to do one thing to get your son back. Number one, we got to sacrifice one of the races all over the earth. Now God knows, you know who the hell is going to be. I said, that's the easy one. They say, well, you can wait to sacrifice them and give them some more time, and then we can come in and eventually kill some of them who did not make the cut in the time period. And you can run the risk of when you get back, they won't be running for you to kill you, but some of y'all back. But you have a decision to kill them again. So you got a dog on charge on what you're going to do, but naturally you know it. You take a sword, I say what it is. Kill the dog on beast. See what I'm saying? Kill the dog on white man. You see? Now, the whole time now, can you imagine the white people are watching this thing too? And the same people, they got locked up in jail, they're kicking and they're mashing down in the whole nine yards, is going to be having a key to their salvation, which is you. You see what the aliens already told them? Well, if you're going to get some help on this earth, you got to go to them prison because some of the niggas you got locked up is the ones who got to keep your salvation. Now that's a hell of a situation to be in, all right? So now, can you imagine how they feel? So it's not just a death, just to say just fast and quick. They're actually seeing a person walking for their life, just like they used to walk into your life on that damn auction block. They had a right to say you got them, whatever. And the whole mark of the story is, we choose that and we get the sun back in the whole nine yards, and this particular part is going on on the screens. Now, the only thing left on this story is, is when I met up with the minister, when I met up with 
with Melchizedek, you see white people in the metaphysics, they're telling, they're telling their uh, college students to think of your own cosmic drama. Because thoughts are things, and this is a way we might be able to get out of this thing. So when I deal with, with, with Melchizedek and them, I say, well, the story that I have got, could that very well be a, 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 a possibility that you have to get Remember, all your thoughts are not your own. The Creator gives you keys to get yourself out of that. This is just one story. You see what I'm saying? So the whole thing is based on your mind, which is all of this. This is all an illusion. And based on how you wake up and what you put in the computer can shape your own destiny because as a man and woman think it, so it can be seen. Check? You see, ultimately, it's like the Wizard of Oz saying you had the power to go home all the time. You see what I'm saying? You didn't need the wizards as the god that you're trying to pray to. You just tap your heels and wake the fuck up. You see how it goes? And this is the story, but like I said, I didn't even get this. When, I, when this story came down, I was, I wasn't even into the UFO thing. The story was repeated ever since 1990. In the whole nine yards. So these are some things that just say, in a nutshell, I asked them, can we do this thing in 95? Can we be in WD97? They're saying, based on you and how you think, not the masses, but the 144,000, which is just talking about a percentage of which all of you are on the frequency because you are being, you are actually learning this particular stuff now. Other than your other people out here crazy in the streets. You, you understand the whole thing? So I hope you enjoyed that thing. You can go back over it another, another time. Um, where's the color picture again? Uh, it, Israel and Kim. Uh, put one of them up to the screen so they can see. Put it back on there so it can be on the video again. Now, I know it's hot and I gave you the story, so I'm going to end this thing out. And if you want to, you can have a little bit of question and answers. But at this time, we can say our shake and hotel. Okay? All right. All right. Now, anybody want to have another question and answer? What's that? The Bule is an organization called Advisors of the King. It's a single pie pie for all uh, of so, And what they do is, they, they are, are, are your black leaders that's put in power positions and what they are is basically they report everything back to the white man and they're, take, they're totally controlled by the white man. All your presidents are your fools and bullets, most of your dog on big time preachers are bullets, and all these, and this is why you have been running, why you have never prospered in your so-called educational and religious status because you've been ruled by a white man. So in actuality, they're the white man's niggas. And they have meetings every Wednesday of the month, and they report it, and the white man tells them what to do with their Negro. And the thing about it is, you follow these dogs on Negro, like Jesse Jackson, um, Will Cosby, all the all the mayors, all the black college presidents, all the congress, congressmen and senators, they work for the white man, and they do his business. You see, and they relieve him of his civic duties. Even when the crack are even around, you got a white man in the in blackface doing the white man's job. That's what the who they is. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Alter Sarah. The Alter Sarah is for Thunderdog and also in relation to Jupiter. Uh that could be yellow claw, yellow candle, blue candle. Sunflower seeds, corn, whether you get a hard piece of corn or whether you get popcorn kernels, it doesn't make a difference. Glass of water, imagine an old Indian medicine woman blessing the water each time you pour the water. Some, some calorie shells, you can put the corn and stuff on the plate. Calorie shells on or anything in Africa, I don't care what it is, to bridge that union. The base that you put it on, on the altar that you drape the cloth over, should be wood. Cloth should be anything from cotton to linen. No, no synthetic fibers. You see, no synthetic fibers. You see, so um, uh, uh, did you write out your list of Thunderdog? I uh, asking what you want prosperity and what you want spiritual. Done. And then you forget about things and remember, if you keep worrying about things, 
you know, if you keep worrying about things, it means you don't believe in the first place. It's like that faith thing, but on a high level. And then um, you write out that particular thing and you, you set up that off in your home because you know these images are coming. A lot of people have had a lot of good stuff happen to them based on their those sort of things. So you ought to be pointing north east. Or huh? What? That don't make no difference. Just set it up. It ain't all technical. You know, I, you know, like that. The spirit knows what's going down. So a lot of people keep asking me questions on all this technical stuff, but the spirit knows. And they know who's doing what. So whatever way you do, as long as you make it an effort, you hook. Also, pour your libations every night, every morning to the gods. And if you can't do it in the morning because you got to work, pour it at 12 o'clock at night because that's the start of the next morning. So that's morning. Or uh, anytime, morning, 12 or 1 or 2 or whatever you before you go to bed. Pour your libations. And this is the lining up that too and getting this cosmic energy on the planet also. It's working too. What's that, sister? Last month when you went to Coffee Points, I went to Indiana. I'd like to know some. Uh, okay. uh, what had happened was the people who went, they say all of them had been initiated on that particular part of they had been initiated. The people who went to the mines there, the people who went to Monroe Lee Town, they went through a certain initiation um, on the cosmic realms of the order of Melchizedek, uh, on, on different orders of what they belong to. But in actuality, uh, um, you can start your initiation sometime next week when you do a ritual on the 24th. July 23rd is the hero hour from the Nile and the original African New Year, which is that. And so if you, they told us on the 24th that you either go to some spiritual bounds, or if you go to, if, if you just do some things in your own home, there's a form of initiation. Good meditation, or do your own little ritual, any kind of way you need to do it, that's personal. And you do that particular thing, and so that's one too. Coming up, this is, uh, what's it called, you know, for some good ideas, some good, some good meditation. Do some candle burning or whatever, do your little ceremony or whatever you want to do. Fast or whatever. You see. So that's one thing also too. Um that's the twenty third. Sunday? Saturday? Saturday? Saturday. Saturday. Um twenty fourth is when they told us to do it. That's Sunday, so you know, you do some things. Any other that is that is the here horizon of the Nile. That is your first African New Year. Your, the, the new year that you had in June, January is the white man new year. Your new year was every July 23rd when the stock of Jesus used to rise up and the Nile would flood and irrigate Kenny and they would plant and all the stuff would come alive. That's your new year. And that starts dog bitch all the way to September 7th, I think. So you got all the dog days to do anything spiritual. You got July 23rd to September 7th, 7th to do something spiritual stuff. And that's the time when you really should be on alert of spiritual things happening because that's the most time when you when that air melanin is activated. So that's some things that you also do. So all not just Monday or Sunday, it's all of the Sunday, some of them. If you want to do some stuff. Now to get your spiritual whatever you're gonna do on any time you need to get it in during that time. So from 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 from, from Sunday to August itself. August uh, September itself, I think. Or whatever. And those are the dog days, which means the God days and you the gods. Oh, any other questions? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm my sister, uh, real spirit sister. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, some of my kids tell me sometimes she's just saying, uh, they, they in the house. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, my son told me that she said that uh, she.
You want to learn something about it, and even if you do go into it, your experience you should always go to study that nobody else has to prove it. That's for anything. You see, anything. You see, the, 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 the breakdown of all things, the reason why people have breakdowns of everything spirituality is a fear, and the fear comes from a lack of knowledge, because ignorance is fear. You see, what's that? One of the good books is the Chakra Handbook. You know that. Did you get that one? Uh, another book is by called Kundalini Awakening by Gaudi Krishna. I asked Black Media to get it. Um, there's another book. Another book try to use the sex handle, like I said, The Art of Sexual Agency is a good book. And an old ancient book, The Tower of Sexuality. There's another book for Kundalini Raising, The Tower of Sexuality. And the art of sexual ecstasy is another book on sexual tantra on how to raise the kundalini. But Gaudi Krishna, Kundalini Awakening is the name of that book. Um, uh, 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 huh? Yeah, all of that. There's another book called Serpent Power. I don't think I brought it as one. Too. There's several books. Serpent Power is up here too. Um, what do you think about the books that have the Well, those books, you wouldn't be able to work with those books anyway. As a matter of fact, those books are coded. I use those books in the code in the deep with a certain amount of knowledge, but those are, some of that thing was to, to, to look up and get white people, but then again, you don't need a certain amount of things. Uh, you see what I'm saying? If you just do half of that, you already got the juice. You already got it, and all you need to do is remember. So, some of the other books that do the thing, and a lot of this stuff is trial and error. You know what I'm saying? Um, when you go inside your body, and you meditate, and you, you focus on the chakras, Start doing things with your own mind to open them up. One good way that I learned in a book is the mindship, uh, uh, this is a good one. It is to imagine your kundalini, your spine, as a big penis. A mind, imagine your head area, your brain, brain area, the oak under your brain as a vagina. Take that penis and run it up in the vagina. Imagine the inside of the brain, a cluster of stars in the universe. Then take the semen and run it up the penis, which is your spine, and let it shoot off in the universe. Which is, but when it shoots off, imagine a cosmic fire, more like a white fire coming up out of the penis. This is one coming from a nuclear, nuclear physics, one that you need to do to imagine certain things. That's one to do. Just imagine this, because we're talking these are things, because all you're doing is the, the Kundalini rising is the sexual energy that's raising this stuff up. Because also, the Kundalini is a feminine energy, also. It's bringing the male back and raising this stuff up. That's why they, they turned the woman into the devil and made the evil serpent in the Bible. The serpent rises up the tree of life, and the damn tree of life is the body of man and woman. The serpent of the producers is the Kundalini, is the serpent, which is called Metatron, which is Melchizedek, which Jesus was the daughter of Melchizedek, which means he was going to already rose his stuff up to higher level. You see, that is what that is talking about. Um, one thing you can imagine is a bright fire wishing up your stuff. But also, too, for you people that just starting, you need to start imagining the chakras first. Some of you people. Um, I hear you say that it's a positive thing because it's like sexual arousal after meditation or during meditation. Mm -hmm. But the question is right after meditation. All of the sexual stuff is positive. Okay. Yeah. Just, just recently, I had a thing. I, to me, it's something I mean, I had a positive. Well, what's happening is a sexual arousal. Sexual energy. That sexual energy is the Kundalini energy. Okay. Okay. So it is positive. When you start.
This is a good book. It's talking about the tree of life. I'll get that right. Illustration of the Holy Kabbalah, which is the spiritual sinners in man. This is Dion Fortune's mythical Kabbalah in the whole nine yards. It's talking about those particular things. So there's several ways of creating visualization to do those things, how to open things up. Start experimenting with all of those things for the simple fact that the God is telling you to deny all of you to become God by any means necessary. You see what I'm saying? And you got the power in you. And start doing that. You know, those are things you do. So even if you got a they even got stuff on masturbation to arouse yourself, not for a dog on what you call it, to get the sexual energy up that you can meditate and bring your voice up. And just imagine the sperm coming up, but you can imagine having a great thing of fire going up your spine. And open yourself up. Each time you do that, you're raising your vibratory rate. So once your vibratory rate gets to a certain level, the Kundalina will open up automatically. But you need to raise your vibratory rate to a certain level so this energy is coming in, it can be receptive to the energy coming in, and this energy can raise it right up. You know, so these are some of the things, don't be too alarmed about raising it, whether it raises up. Just do it and raise the vibratory rate, it's automatically going to open up, if you raise the vibratory rate. But, like they told us, if we build this temple and these guru who masters come up through the floor, they can hook us all up too. So I'm going to try to get that going on, you know, so we can do some things also too. You know. Any other questions? What's that, bro? There's nothing, it's just that, it's just that, um, he's got, it's like lighter fog. You, you just run out, and you start making up solutions, and the solutions you start thinking of, you start, because you ain't getting from a spiritual level, you, you think of stuff in your surroundings, so you start trying to use what's around you, and what's around you is garbage. You end up with ACP and all that don't mean you no good. So in one, so in, in, in actuality, the point is, like I said, his brother was from the brother, he's from the way to meet up. So you know, I'm not telling this stuff that'll make mockery man or whatever. But I'm trying to say is if 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 you supposed to serve other people and you get in dog in trouble, then the people are supposed to be God and spiritual. And when, when when the spiritual methods come down and you do something and you don't listen to the damn people, then they hell with you. You know what I'm saying? Just take your punishment. But if he's willing to listen, he is I heard he had several messages. He's willing to listen. Then something can happen up the road. You see. You know. But right now it ain't time for selling no damn drums. When we talk about raising the cool and in, if you talk about selling some fucking drums, come on man, this ain't no damn boy little man show. This real spiritual God, you ain't gonna get the God who's selling no damn out of no damn farms. Our people don't need nothing to eat kill it. We eat too damn much. You know what I'm saying? Kill it, nothing. And you know dog and well, it, they eat everything but pork in it. Selling people chicken and nasty fish they did not see. Ain't none of that stuff good for the people. They want people to go straight up their territory. You doing that now, that's just like whatever tax stuff. Hell, you know, you know dog and well, it's time to go back there with all the beef vegetarians. What kind of junk is this? It's all the beef vegetarians. You go to their place, they eat healthy. They just said something about the body and that about the. Burgers, mm -hmm. hamburgers, yeah. shooting with some ice or some, some radioactive stuff. That's right, and you know what? That's true. All kinds of stuff, they haven't had some babies to die from that stuff. But do you know when they had the Philadelphia, not the Philadelphia, the Tuskegee experiment? One of the Tuskegee experiments was to make bacon taste better, to make it so that black people would love it. And to the point where you get hooked on it. So they put another chemical in the bacon to make it even greater than what it tastes. Because if you take bacon and come from the hog and bacon come out the store, they're two different types of bacon. One is kind of bland. And one tastes so damn good. That's the one that's already. And part of the Tuskegee experiment, not only to suit other people with symptoms, symptoms, was to put a chemical in the bacon to make it do some things like that. But it's not even nothing to talk about the hog. No meat. It's a cracker. Now you need to tell me, you say, I can't do it. And you say the white man is the devil. If the devil can do it, you call yourself God. I know damn well you can do it. At least that. Any other questions? What's that, brother? Um, would you tell this story about the brother who was arrested 
and he had to call down the guards in order to uh, get the spirits out of the cell so he could get a nice suit. That's the brother right here was just arrested. And and he called on the guards to get them spirits out of themselves, like you said, jailhouse full of them. And the whole nine yards. Uh, uh, my, my mate was driving in South Carolina during the holiday. Now, South Carolina on the four states four states. That means they get their money off of highway patrol and stuff. In the holidays of their time. She had no bad night, no registration. That you couldn't find a registration in the car, and the damn license tag was expired, and she was out of state. Now, you know that's what we call in jail with these crap. But the ship was right over the car. And I said, I was up and I said, I ain't got to get out of the car. Go on out there. I said, the ship gonna take care of all this. Thunder dog, he was and all that right there. Shoot, she went out there, the damn man gave her a warning ticket, not to give a warning. He gave her the warning ticket so nobody else could stop her ass. <laughs> you just show him this. You don't let him stop. A crime. That's how it's been for I can't, I like I say, anytime you get into some messed up stuff, imagine you that thunder dog boat. Hit everything with that boat to life. I was up in the dog going on. I was, like I said, I was up in the, uh, uh, getting ready to go to Detroit election. And I didn't, and I didn't have, because the people, man told me before that it was, he gave me a ticket for free. He activated a ticket, an old ticket for free. So I spent the money the day before. I came back up there, what was that, 145? I said, the man yesterday told me I had the money yesterday, and the man told me it was free. I can do all right. I don't care. A hundred, hundred dollars. Get it right. I said, please, man. I bet she like, no, no, no. And this woman was not that enough. I closed my eyes, shot that bull to her behind. <laughs> and when I when, when I go over, I said, lady, I got fifty dollars. I got sixty dollars. She said, give me this. That bull. I did it on the dog on chain when she in Marta. I give her another thing. I got to catch. I come out to the airport. I got to catch Marta in the house. I got. I ain't got the one dollar bill. I got some twins, and I got one dollar bill. And it was washed. You know how you wash it all the time? It ain't got nothing on it. It ain't had nothing on it. And I put it in there about five times, and the machine put it back out. I said, I ain't got no dollar bill. So I pushed it back up in there, and I shot that lightning bolt, and that machine took that dollar bill and gave me my money. So this is power we talking about. I started dealing with divine higher power other than just the stuff that you're talking about. Because we are out of home this stuff, like I said. Oh, you never got a lot of vision for it. Huh? After you, After you do it, let it sit out there until the next time you pour it, then get up that morning or whatever, you're going to do it again, pour that water out, start all over. But like I said, you don't have to hit all this on you. Now, spring water, just fill your bottles up after you pour your libation and leave your bottles out all night and let the water. Oh, all yeah, right, I just fill up in the morning pour it. God can know what time it is. They can, they can do a pill out of water. Hey, you drink it. They can fill up out of water. They know what time it is. They just want to see whether you're going to do it. Like I said sometimes, sometimes when you fix them some food, fix them a plate. But fix them a plate before you eat, give them a plate. You know, you, you know how that is. That's hard on me because I don't cook that many meals, so if I can buy something, out. If I go buy something, one little thing to eat, now that's all I got. But I'm saying if you are cooking meals, fix them a plate too. Work with the guards like that. They say give them some rum. They like to give them some rum. Give them some water, I go, I, I take, I don't mind money on my water. I, 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 I go, I give them some juice. I might go out and buy a bottle of wine. You don't just go buy a bottle of wine, just to pour some of the stuff. Give them some wine. Does it disappear? It, the, the person did turn brown. It was some white wine, turn brown. Like they have some teriyaki sauce. <laughs> give them some wine, give them some rum, they like rum. Give them rum. Rum and gin. You know? Got a piece of food, put it on the altar, give it to them. But you know, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to put it all on the altar. You can cook the food and say, this is to the gods, Ashe. Which Ashe means power. What's another word for Ashe? So be it. So be it, divine power. You give it a that. They say, quit praying all the damn time. You the God, don't pray no more. That was your slave man. That was for the man that couldn't get on the high level because he was the beast. They say, you the God, they just say, be and it is. And will it into existence? You already know what time it is. But really, you're supposed to be at the level with a lot of things you shouldn't be wanting. All the stuff that's probably out in the store, you shouldn't be worrying yourself sick over that shit. Just bad stuff to get you right. You're supposed to have you don't know you want that stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know, and plus I say, if you 
you're going to buy some nice stuff, go out to the damn outlet for the graphic shop. You spend hundreds of dollars on this boogie stuff downtown, this orange boogie soul stuff downtown. And the white man who got the designer stuff that he got in Lennox, you going to Lennox spending thousands of dollars in this crack of Irene and the outlet buying the stuff for 20 and 30 dollars. So they don't, they don't spend no money on no nice stuff either. You see what I'm saying? I'm up in the store looking at dog on shoes the other week, two or three hundred dollars. I go, same shoes, two or three hundred dollars, fifty nine dollars at Sims. Same three hundred dollars, nice stuff. Don't put no ragged stuff in it, don't tell. But you don't have to spend money for the real kid quality stuff. It's all at the outlets. They got outlets all over Chattanooga, all in all these places. City College Boulevard, Shoemaker's Warehouse. Open up Friday, you can buy all that stuff for cheap, so you really don't have to spend that kind of money on the stuff you go to Lynch and spend all your check on. That's for rich white people and dumb black people. Smart black, smart people don't even shop yet. They get the real deal stuff in the outlet. You know. So that's what time. Any other questions? Oh. Any other questions? Well, yeah, okay, what's that? Um, I'm a little confused about the author. Um, you can use that all right design to bless your house, bring in a certain energy, all that. You can pray in front of it when you want to, you don't necessarily have to all the time, just put it in your house. Just the existence of it. Just the existence of it is, is a form of that. Just align yourself with certain energy. Alright. Did I get my pay did I get my papers back? Alright. Peace. All right, y'all see?